With the nuclear negotiations hitting a critical stage, is the U.S. missing the point about what's driving Iran? Iran's supreme leader gave a speech last week on the 25th anniversary of Ayatollah Khomeini's death. The U.S. media emphasized the harsh statements the Supreme Leader made about America, but I think they missed at least three implications of the Supreme Leader's comments that are worrying him and should be worrying us. Contrary to President Obama's foreign policy speech at West Point two weeks ago, the Supreme Leader thinks the President is actually bluffing on a potential U.S. military strike if the negotiations fall through, especially after the U.S.'s aborted strike on Syria over its use of chemical weapons last August. The Iranians increasingly believe that this president will not back up his foreign policy with military power. This is the reason why I think the Ayatollah believes now is a good time to extract a good deal from the administration. What was largely missed in the media was the Supreme Leader's focus on the growing sectarian conflict in the Middle East particularly in Syria and Iraq. Al-Qaeda and other Sunni extremists believe that Shia Muslims are not true Muslims. Iran is an overwhelmingly Shia country. If Sunni extremism continues to grow, it could undermine Iran's aspiration to lead the Islamic world. This is probably their number one problem, even more so than the U.S. The U.S. should begin taking advantage of these fears into our policy considerations. The Supreme Leader's speech last week was a de facto state of the revolution. The Ayatollah praised the people's resilience and how they've been able to overcome the challenges imposed by the West. Though I worry that Iran's new overconfidence could cause headaches for our negotiating team, we should remember that the Supreme Leader does want a deal and probably wants one badly. We tend to underestimate the amount of leverage that we have in these talks. U.S. negotiators should remember that and not back down on their positions.